Welcome to our first Bible story from Camp in a Box. It's a story that comes at the beginning of the first book of the Bible, Genesis. And it starts in the beginning. In the very beginning, God's love bubbled over where there was nothing else. No trees, no birds, no animals, no sky, no sea, only darkness. And out of this love, God said, light, and there was day, and there was night. And when the first day was done, God smiled and saw that it was good. On the second day, God said, let there be sky where the clouds can float and the wind can blow. And the sky was bright and wide and beautiful. On the third day, God said, let the waters gather together into oceans and let the dry land appear. Now God decided to make the world even more dazzling with tall trees and long green grass and that the first flower opened up in all its glory. On the fourth day, God said, let the sky be filled with the sun and the moon and then God scattered stars all throughout the sky. On the fifth day, God said, let there be birds to fly and sing and fish to swim and splash. And the world was filled with the joyous sound of bird song. On the sixth day, God said, let there be animals elephants and giraffes, cats and mice, bees and bugs and dogs, and suddenly the world was a very noisy place. But something was still missing. Then God said, I will make people, and I'll make them like me so that they can enjoy the earth and take care of it. God did just as God had said, and it was all very good. God looked at everything that God had made and clapped his hands together in delight. It is so good. And on the seventh day, God laughed and rested and enjoyed his creation. As we heard in the story, God is a creator, and what God has made is good. It's our job to take care of this good earth and help it to be as good as it can be. We rely on God because God has made it all connected. If we look back at the story, we can see how each day of creation builds on the last. The things that God creates could not exist without the things that came before it. Fish couldn't exist without water. Land animals couldn't survive without plants. And humans could not survive without all the rest. Now we have some questions for you. What? Oh, I'm sorry. What do you like best in the story of creation? Why? When have you experienced the goodness of creation? And what is one way that you can help take care of the earth? How have you experienced the closeness of God? And now we come to the special activity connected with this Bible story. One way people often remembered their connectedness to the whole world is through looking up at the stars. They can remind us just how big our world and the universe are, and how amazing God is for having created it all. In your box, you'll find a few pages of a book about constellations named Finding the Constellations, written by H.A. Ray. And that should help give you a head start in finding them. Try to go somewhere at night that doesn't have too much extra light, which can make finding the stars difficult on a clear night when the moon isn't too bright. You definitely should ask your adults for help and permission with this activity. I recommend starting out looking for the Big Dipper, which is shown on the first two pages that you have, this one and this one. 
Once you found that in the sky, use the other two pages to figure out where the other stars and constellations can be found. Remember, you don't need to find them all in one night. Some that should be a little easier to find besides the Big Dipper are, let's see, we got here Cassiopeia. Oh, she must be on here somewhere. Oh, there she is. Sometimes she looks like a W, and sometimes she looks like an M. But I like to think that she is the queen sitting in her throne. Ah. And then there's also the Little Dipper, which is a smaller version of the Big Dipper. And at the end is what we call the North Star. When you can find that, you're looking north. There's also Draco the Dragon, who winds his way around all the other constellations in the area. And Cepheus. No, some strange names, I know. But I hope you enjoy this activity and let us know what you find. Before we go, we want to let you know about the other activities for this week. There are dino puppets, and you'll find three sheets of dino puppet shapes to choose from. And you'll also need the clothespins and the glue stick in the bag, some scissors, and a box of crayons. There's also activity dice. You'll find two sheets with pre-made dice and a couple sheets with blank dice to make your own. Once again, you'll need the glue stick from the bag and the safety scissors from the box. You'll also need a pen and pencil for the blank dice, but those you'll have to supply from your home. And then there's tic-tac-toe. Each box has a bag of big sidewalk chalk, so find a good place to make your tic-tac-toes outside. And then, there's the do-it-yourself board game. <coughs> We've supplied a blank board game templates for you to make up your own game. you also find in this bag wooden discs for pieces, the markers, and dice to play the game. You'll need crayons from the box, or if you want, you can use markers, but those you'll have to find at home to help color it. And then every box has a scavenger hunt. The scavenger hunt for this time is a color match, so you're going to go around and find things that match these colors. And then finally, there's a cipher wheel. You will find two parts to it, an inner ring and an outer ring. You cut one out and put it on the other to put assemble the uh, cipher ring. Now, it says that you should use a paper clip. I would recommend, unfortunately we didn't include them, but I would recommend looking for these brass fasteners or brads to help attach the two wheels together. And then you can use that to decipher these special clues, all you sleuths out there. That is a lot of activities for just one week. And you may find that some involve a little friendly competition with a brother or a sister or a friend, and some may need a parent's help. If you have any questions or something seems to be missing, don't hesitate to contact me. Call or email or text or even just drop by the church. Now before we go, one special announcement. While these activities can be done at home, we want to have a weekly check-in. Every Sunday morning at 1030, we invite you to join us to let us know what you thought of the Bible story and the activities. We will do this live in person at the church pavilion, but if you can't be there, join us on Zoom. We should need only about 15 minutes. Then you can get ready for worship. Have fun while you learn about God's amazing creation. Have a good first week.